Well, this is the next video. And I want to talk about some of the elements of the soldering. I'm going to solder the back of this simple little cabinet door panel. One thing I keep is a bucket around with a piece of steel wool because I like taking my, t taking my iron tip and keeping it clean with steel wool. This is a maroon and white inland 100 watt iron. I like them the best. They're cheap uh, irons. They generally last pretty good time and I like the uh, 1 8 inch tips and I like the 3 16 inch tips. They're fairly inexpensive. They last me at least a year so that's pretty good considering the amount of soldering that I do. I only use Canfield Flux. I don't know where you can buy it um, because the source that I got it from, I buy them in these big tubs and this is almost all I got but I'll tell you what this tub will do 50, 60, 80, maybe even 100 windows. Windows! It goes forever because I use a brush so there's my application. I can use any kind of solder. In this particular case I'm using Hirsch metals which is good. Um, I only use 60-40. Um, 50-50 is for lead as far as I'm concerned and I don't use any other solder other than 60-40. Uh, I have used lead free and I didn't like it. I've used 63-37 solder and yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty expensive though. Um, so anyway, that's all neither here nor there. I'm going to flip this panel over and I do it gently because you can break a panel. And this is a small panel. I'm using the towel because I have a very high surface in these jewels. So I want the towel to absorb those textures. You might even have to flip the towel over again. In other words, if your textures are really deep or high, in other words, flip your towel over again if that's the case and set your window on her so that you feel that it's flat so just that way just kind of gently push it down just gently and that way you've embedded the jewels into the blanket or the or the fire or the towel or whatever it is you use when I apply my flux I don't care if it goes everywhere because I'm gonna wash the window off you don't need a lot of flux in fact, you don't even need to see the amount of flux for it to work. And so this flux is kind of like Vaseline. It allows the solder to flow. Chemically, scientifically, I can't tell you why. But without it, you're not going to get any solder bead whatsoever on your copper foil. So I'm fluxing. Solder, by the way, cannot stick to glass. A lot of people think, how do, you know, they ask me, how do you get your lines? So and I said, well, your lines are only as good as their foil job because the lines, your solder lines, cannot stick to glass. There's no metal in it. So I'm going, to, I tinned my iron and I'm going to create my solder bead. I feed the solder onto the top of the iron, as you can see the tip, and it runs down. Many times I could get 8, 9, 10 inches on the first run. I love soldering. Soldering is fun. I've got several techniques of tapping it, dotting side to side. Don't be afraid to experiment. Try everything. See what works for you. Okay, we got that far. I have to check my camera to see what I assume uh, I'm in full view I'm not going to get too far in this video because uh, YouTube has restrictions 10 minutes so I know I'm a yacker but that's what we need to do if we're trying to explain something you notice I have not put flux on the window at all this is real time folks you don't need to flux up your window full, full. It's not spitting. That's what's so good about this solder. It's not spitting. It creates very little vapors. Don't worry about your fumes in this case. If you've got a pretty good size open room, you're pretty good to go. And if there's a ceiling fan off in the distance, it's going to pull that fume away from you. 
I advise people who are soldering a, a lot to eventually get a lead test. They're not that expensive. Have your doctor order you up one. I had a test a long time ago. It wasn't even measurable. I love soldering. I love soldering. I have soldered for sometimes six, seven, eight hours in a row. For some people that would absolutely drive them bonkers. <laughs> but I like it. I understand it. I don't have a conflict with solder. I understand it, it understands me, and it's almost like it's almost like solder and I have an agreement. It's like we talk to each other almost. It might sound kind of silly, but hey, I get the results I'm looking for. How do you get your results? Is it a mechanical uh, argument that you're having with your solder? If you're working on an area for too long, more than two or three passes, get out of there and go to another area immediately. The chances of breaking the glass are pretty good because of too much heat is accumulating and it's also um, a very good possibility that your glass is going to melt through. We call them blow throughs or whatever where it melts through to the other side because you're just heating it up too many times. If that's the case, go to another area and then come back to your area. I've only flexed this window one time and I'm getting great results. I'm using Canfield Copper Mate Paste Flux. I believe it's the best there is. So is their solder. But the solder is very expensive, so I make do with any 6040. I've never found a 6040 I can't work with. I'm patient. I'm not. And you don't. And there's no pressure on the iron. It's very light. I mean, it's almost exaggeratingly silly light. There's no pressure need you, that you need to apply pressing down to a window. It's just very light. Just let the soldering iron do the work. I have no rheostat on my iron. The iron can't even keep up with me as it is. So I don't use a rheostat. Don't need to. See, I walked right into the other. I always place the solder up on top of the tip somewhere. Never at the, Never lay the solder down and try to solder to it. Because a lot of times what you do is you solder it and then you try to pull the solder away and you rip your foil. So don't do that. Only apply the solder to the barrel or the tip. Find an area and stick with it and do it that way. The, let the iron heat up the solder and let it roll down the tip down to your work. This is just my suggestion. Everybody's got their own technique and way, and this is the way it works for me, and I get incredible results. I will uh, take the camera off the stand and try to do a close-up so you can see what my solder looks like. Got to be quick. We're rounding 10 minutes. Time goes by fast. Let's see, come on, camera, kind of threw it in a tizzy there. Okay, let's get the camera, oh I understand, sorry about that people. We need to go from telephoto, sorry about that, hope I didn't waste too much time. You can see my, uh, there's no bumps. I go very quickly, no pop marks. I don't like the little pop bubbles. If they exist, I go back right through them. I've been accused of manufacture of my solder lines being manufactured because they're so smooth. A lot of times you cannot find where I started and stopped. Ah, there's a little tiny microscopic little uh, little bump right. Where my where's my finger at? Sometimes it's kind of funny to right there. Little tiny little bump. You'll never see that. Anyway, that's what my solder looks like up close. So, thanks for watching the video. Bye-bye.